Hello traders and welcome to another live session hosted by Orbex. Thank you so much for being here with us. So we have a full house today. Richard is my name and uh, reading the charts is my game. Uh, I'm the Elliot Wave Jedi and I'm back again live. This time I'm not alone. James Hart is present here with me ready for action and to take uh, basically to face the FOMC meeting. As you can see, Orbex brought together two of its key analysts, thus combining fundamental and technical analysis for this special event, which is, of course, the Fed rate decision. Now, this session is being streamed live on YouTube and Facebook, but uh, the overall questions and interaction will take place inside the actual room of the live uh, webinar for our attendees. So if you wish to join, then the link uh, is in the description. It's a free registration of course you may register as as you please uh, now uh, this session is being also recorded uh, for uh, later viewing and there are also timestamps uh, available so be sure to use them if you're watching this later on or looking for a specific topic or symbol etc right now today is the 19th of December it is uh, 8.34 p.m. Eastern European Standard Time, which is 6.34 p.m. Um, GMT. And the market seems to be located at a crucial point, a juncture. It seems like the FOMC meeting could be synchronizing for a shock as the USD, uh, USD's reaction today would most likely have a direct impact on the FX majors, indices, precious metals and energy sectors. So during this webinar, uh, James and I will share our own personal opinions from both a fund fundamental uh, perspective, but also from a technical standpoint. So together, what we will do is uh, basically we will be sharing our analysis with you before, during and after the actual event. So you're in for a treat. Now, first, James will share some important facts with you and work his magic. Uh, and then I will be polishing the outlook here with the some significant events. Um, you know, he, he will be... Um, uh, I will be doing the technical analysis and mostly focusing on Elliott wave sequences and patterns. Uh, but before we kick things off, I'd like to highlight the fact that everything that we're about to say or do is not designed to influence or induce you in any, any way. And all our views uh, are to be treated as simple market commentary and not as an investment advice. Thank you very much for understanding. Now, joining me today from the UK from, is uh, the one and only Mr. James Hart, an esteemed analyst who serves traders responsibly with Orbex and a man who uh, is experienced with the price action and with the markets but also with its fundamental drivers so you may f you may actually s find some of his uh, work on the orbex blog as well so without further ado um, allow me to pass the mic to james hart who will now commence this session and uh, walk us through some important facts so J james you have the mic Hi, Richard. Yeah, thanks a lot for that uh, beautiful introduction. And I hope that it's certainly a lot warmer in Cyprus than it is here in London at the moment. It's freezing. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure you've, uh, you've got some better weather. Yeah, not, 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 not that great, but it's still, it's still raining a bit here, but uh, it's fine. I mean, there's a, there's a tent of bearishness, let's say, <laughs> in the air, right? <laughs> yeah. So what do you think about this? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it today keeps us warm, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let, let's kick things off here because I'm pretty sure that our attendees are um, are actually looking for uh, some um, for, for us to basically give them some important insights. Um, before before we actually kick in with some uh, some technicals, is there anything that you'd like to uh, add from your uh, fundamental perspective, from an expert's uh, for fundamental perspective? Yeah, let me go ahead and uh, and share my slides. I've got a few key points I just want to walk through. Uh, walk through it, everyone. Um, there we go. Okay, one second. It's uh, it's actually been a while since I've done a live live webinar, so it's nice to uh, it's nice to have some company on the line. Exactly. Great. Okay, so can you see the uh, the title slide then for trading the FOMC? Just give me one moment. That should be. That should be up for everyone to see now. Yep, exactly. Let me just help everyone up, just for uh, just for them to be able to see this. And um, yeah, okay. You 
you're good to go. Great, okay. So hello everyone, I'm James Hart, as Richard just, uh, just told you. And what I thought would be good to do before the decision today, before Richard runs through his technical outlook with you, is just to sort of give an overview of the key fundamentals of the web. So if we just quickly recap what we saw at the last uh, FOMC meeting in November then, um, obviously the Fed kept rates unchanged, having previously hiked rates for three times over 2018. Now, this wasn't a disappointing outcome for the market because the statement issued alongside the decision gave a good indication that further hikes are to be expected. And specifically, the statement read, the committee expects that further gradual increases in the target range for the federal funds rate will be consistent with sustained expansion of economic activity, strong labor market conditions, and inflation near the committee's symmetric 2% objective over the medium term. So that might sound like a lot of gobbledygook. Basically, what the Fed is saying there is that in line with what it's seeing in terms of economic performance, it views further rate hikes as necessary. So again, the decision to keep rates on hold in November then came as no surprise or consequence to the market, really. Um, pricing has always favored a December date for the bank's fourth hike. And as I said, what the market was looking for was an indication that this hike was going to be forthcoming. So the assessment from the bank um, during that meeting then was broadly positive. The Fed noted further declines in the unemployment rate, continued strong growth in household spending, along with inflation remaining near the bank's 2% target. And to the downside, the only point really that the bank picked up on was lower business fixed investment that had moderated from the rapid pace seen earlier in the year. So all in all, the meeting was welcomed by Balls then as it was seen as keeping the December rate hike on course. So what have we seen since that uh, November FOMC meeting? So on the data front then, indicators have been somewhat mixed. We've had November retail sales stronger than expected. November CPI was unchanged. ISM manufacturing and non-manufacturing both stronger than expected. Non-manufacturing and services PMIs were weaker than expected. November non-farm payrolls weaker than expected. Wage growth stayed unchanged at 3.1% in November. Third quarter GDP actually stayed stronger than expected at 3.5%. October durable goods then weaker than expected. October CPI weaker than expected. Um, but October retail sales better than expected. So basically on the data front then, the picture was pretty mixed. So it's hard to argue one way or another then on the basis of data looking at those readings. However, with retail sales trending higher over the last two months and GDP staying firm, there is a positive skew. And furthermore, one important point to note is that despite the heavy sell-off that we've seen in oil over recent months, with crude prices having collapsed 30% from 2018 highs, inflation remains stable in November defying calls for a sharply lower reading. So looking at the data then, the evidence suggests that the Fed is still on course to raise rates in December as the economy was expected, as the economy is performing as expected rather. However, there was a fly in the ointment uh, in late November, which is worth picking up on, which was uh, some comments that Fed Chairman Powell made to the New York Economic Forum New York, the Economic Club of New York, rather, where he told investors that the Fed now judges that the headline policy rate, e.g. the Fed's main interest rate, is now sitting just below the level which it would deem neutral. So these comments caught the market by surprise somewhat, given that just a month prior, Powell had told uh, reporters that the Fed was still a long way from neutral in terms of the policy rate. And some players have taken these comments as a sign that the Fed is going to opt to remain on hold um, over the first part of next year. So while many players are still looking for a rate hike in December, what they're going to be focusing on is the outlook for the early part of next year with the potential the Fed is going to um, project a slower pace of rate hikes. So looking ahead to this meeting then, and uh, I'm running through this quite quickly, so I hope you can keep up. I'm just keeping an eye on the time here. I wanna make sure we've got time to get the technicals in before we get to the decision. 
So again, the market is looking for a rate hike, a 0.25% rate hike. That's what priced in. But the forward guidance is what's going to be key here. Now, the current dot plot suggests three further rate hikes over 2019. So if we get any downward revision to this, then this is going to be a major bearish catalyst for USD. And indeed, even if we don't get any downward revision to the three hikes that are currently forecast, the forward guidance itself might acknowledge some of the downside risks um, burgeoning on the horizon for the US dollar, such as the impact of stronger USD coming into play, a weaker fiscal boost from those tax reforms seen earlier in the year, as well as mortgage rates, 30-year mortgage rates now above 5%, leading to weaker home sales and reduced construction expending. So there's a lot of uh, elements which are combining over the next three to six months, which look likely to constrain um, US dollar activity and could cause the Fed to stay on hold. Now, if we look at the current split of policymakers then, so on the dovish side, we've got Kashgari, Bullard, Evans, Harker, Bostick. The more neutral players are Kaplan, Clarida, Powell, Bowman, Carls, Brainard, Daly, and then the Hawks are Rosenberg, George, Mester, Williams, and Barkett. So a couple of key comments then from what we've heard from some of these uh, FOMC policymakers recently. So we had Bostick then saying, I currently think we're within shouting distance of neutral, and I do think neutral is where we want to be. So these comments from the Atlanta Fed chairman, um, echoing those comments from Fed chairman Powell. And then on the other side of the coin, we had Fed's John Williams saying, I do expect that further gradual increase, increases in interest rates will best foster a sustained economic expansion and sustain achievement of our dual mandates. So again, there is a split within the FOMC, and it's worth noting that there are bearish risks for the dot plot. We currently have nine members forecasting three rate hikes for next year, and we have seven forecasting two or fewer. So as you can see, it would only take two members from the first group to shift their view lower to reduce the median forecast to two rate hikes for 2019, which would be strongly bearish for the USD. So essentially, the point I'm trying to hammer home here is that the rate hike is priced in, and what the market is going to be focused on is the forward guidance for next year, and specifically those dot plots. If we see any reduction in the dot plots, this is going to be highly bearish for the US dollar. Even if the dot plots stay as they are, the market is going to be very keenly scrutinizing the statement and the press conference later in the evening to see whether or not the Fed is likely to reduce the pace of hikes next year. Okay, so that's everything I wanted to share with you from a fundamental perspective then, and I think that leads in nicely to the technical wizardry which Richard is going to share with you now. So Richard, what I'll do is I'll just change presenter and hand the screen back over to you, my friend. Mic on. Okay, there we go. All right. <clears throat> Mic off. Mic on. All right. Um, you can hear me, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to double check. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation, there, James. It's uh, it actually helps uh, helps a lot for uh, for, um, for for people who are actually following the the news. Myself, I'm not really a fundamental guy. You know me. I like my charts. I like my patterns. But uh, there's 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 something that I would like to uh, let's say ask in regards to what you said. And I'm pretty sure that. Um, our attendees and viewers are actually asking the same question like uh, if, we, if we were to keep it simple, right? Um, I'm getting the sense from what you said. I'm getting the sense that um, only uh, Let's say a bearish tone would be for the dot plot to actually change from free towards lower, right? I mean free heights uh, if free hikes in uh, 2019 towards like lower if they change uh, if they uh, you know if more people join towards that bearish to, towards that dovishness let's say um, right. but uh, a, a bullish the, a, a bullish um, catalyst for uh, for the uh, let me just okay there we go uh, a bullish catalyst for the US dollar would be more uh, hikes more than three so if we get any of those members uh, increasing their view, we get three or more hikes suggested in the dot plot, then yeah, this would be strongly bullish for the US dollar. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also, um, let's say, for instance, the rate hike is already priced in. Okay. Um, so uh, 
a, a, a hike from uh, with with more like um, from uh, 2.25 benchmark points towards 2.50 uh, benchmark points uh, for the Federal Reserve is not really going to be a surprise. The investors uh, they they are actually expecting this, right? It's, it's already like priced in, so yeah. it's not going to come as a surprise if the hike comes. It's not really the focus in my personal uh, perspective i'm not and I'm, I'm really really not an expert in this you know more than me uh we know with the, with the fundamentals let's say but uh what i believe could be the trigger and i'm not i'm pretty sure i'm not sure if you will agree but uh, let's say maybe you will the, the fomc press conference and uh, fed chairs uh, james uh, you know jerome powell could um could uh, tell more on the actual next trends because uh, according to his tone and his uh, you know his speech we could actually have the next the next trends right do you agree with me on that so the, it's more important if uh, the FOMC press conference is more important what he's going to say how he's going to react to questions and stuff right I mean, this is going to be the big one, isn't it, where he gives all of those key details, he answers questions, we always get the reporters probing a lot, answering, asking the questions that really give the market moving impact. So yeah, absolutely, it's going to come down to the devils in the details, as they say. Yeah, right. exactly, exactly, exactly. So, um, look, from, from uh, I'm going to walk, I'm going to walk you guys through my technical uh, standpoint and, uh, you know, charts, patterns, etc. I do have a triangular pattern on the dollar index right here and it's pretty tricky, uh, but the market is indeed located at, at uh, as I said in the beginning when we first started this, uh, this this session, it is located at a juncture, a crucial point from a technical perspective. And I will actually display uh, exactly what I mean by that, right? Um, let me just do something here really, really quick. Okay, and I'm going to pull up this um, this this dollar index on the daily uh, time frame okay so you guys can actually see it uh, see it better now uh, obviously all of you can uh, can see my screen everything is uh, is fine right uh, I just just wanted to make sure of these things okay now the point is, I want I wanted to highlight, and I'm make I'm gonna try to make this as as, as quick and easy as possible because I know it's complicated. The, the, my my type of analyzing the uh, the way I'm analyzing the markets is pretty advanced, pretty complex and stuff, right? But it's really not. Sometimes, you know, I'm I'm gonna try to keep it as simple as possible. Now, let's say for instance, in December, uh, la on the previous rate, uh, I mean, uh, rate decision in December 2017, right? dollar crashed i mean not crashed it, it actually started a, a, a bearish trend and exactly that happened they ra they rose the rates but the dollar actually commenced a bearish impulse right uh, so this leaves me obviously uh, after that the dollar index by the way this is the daily chart on the dollar index right for those of you who are um want to know the time frame um after that, let's say for instance, uh, with February uh, 2018, started the uptrend, right? So the way I'm labeling it is, I mean, I'm labeling a change of trends right here, and also the um, possible head uh, in the head and shoulders formation. Just need this piece basically for a possible expanded flat, expanding or running flat. But I would actually be more comfortable with the um, expanding flat so that we can actually hit the 61.8 of the entire uptrend right here in the five wave sequence uh, so i would be comfortable with the golden ratio right there from a, from a fibonacci perspective let's say and uh, you know combining these uh, wave analysis so uh, if i would just take a look at it uh, at this trend from a fractal perspective i would be noticing uh, this triangular pattern right here and this triangular pattern right here and if I were to do something really, really cool right here, right, I'm going to just, let's say, for instance, clone this entire thing from here, let's say from 29th of May 2018 until uh, 15th of August 2018, right? So I have this, I have this, I'm just going to take it, just going to place it here. I'm going to show you something amazing, guys, right? Look at this. I mean, let me just, let me just put this right here, okay. There we go. Come on. Okay, there we go. Come on, baby. All right. Now, notice the similarity with this pattern, right? Let me just zoom in because this is quite uh, quite important, right? Okay. So, previously we had like drop, rise, drop, rise, drop, rise. 
Okay. We have a drop, rise, drop, rise, drop, rise, right? Now the only thing that's missing is this piece right here for this piece to actually start. Okay. So it's kind of uh, it's kind of looking. I mean, it's pretty dodgy because a triangle. Let me uh, from a technical perspective. Let me explain to you what a triangle is. Um, it, it represents a struggle, a point of uh, interest, a, a struggle between uh, sides, both bulls and bears. It's a point of interest, a vibration zone, right? So it, it also uh, symbolizes. I mean, reflects a a pattern, uh, you know, from a pattern type of perspective, uh, symbolizes uh, the, the the last the, the last uh, struggle before the trend actually changes. Now, what I'm wondering, and this is the key right here, is the dollar index ready for? I mean, gonna provide that last move or just drop directly? Okay. Now, for that, we're gonna have to um, go, um, you know, zoom in to the uh, smaller. Uh, time frames. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run through the two-hour chart on this uh, dollar index right here. Now, what this, what this is telling me, right? I mean, obviously we have the support trend line from that triangular-looking uh, pattern, right? Previously bounced here, and the way it went on the upside represents, like, let's say, for instance, could be a, a three-wave sequence, which is corrective, and could could actually find its top right there. However. It can also be an expanded flat right here for a for one more squeeze on the upside before the trend actually could uh, could actually reverse. Uh, if that will have would happen, then uh, the move should should be a five wave sequence because a trend change should occur um, should actually end with five waves on the upside and five start with five waves on the downside. So. Um, it kind of needs, kind of needs um, a, a bullish either a C wave or uh, or a fifth wave, right? In in this case, um, it could be a, a fifth wave, right? However, I do have this arrow right here, which is bearish, of course, the bearish outlook. Just in case it really tanks directly, then. This move on the upside could be invalidated, and uh, I don't think uh, um, I'm gonna be looking for the upside anymore. Uh, instead, let's say if the move, if the dollar drops right now, I mean in five minutes we're gonna have the data, right? So, if that drops, then uh, we could we could have a retracement as a second wave, so one, two, and then a big uh, bearish um, uh, bearish wave, which would represent the third wave and the big impulsive uh, bearish move. Um, now this should look like a three-wave sequence, obviously, and a second wave either a sharp correction or a zigzag, if that happens, right? And this trend line could be retested as a, as it is a let's say a point of interest, as I display it right here. So we don't have we don't really have enough. Uh, I mean, uh, so much time on our hands. Just just gonna quickly run through the uh, other so let's start with the let me just jump on the metals right here as you can actually see I've I'm labeling a five wave sequence right here this could be a leading diagonal as well right in a five wave sequence uh, but it would need a retracement before more upside could be uh, could be granted and um, yeah now silver let's say also on the two hour chart uh, also, a leading, possible leading diagonal. I'm not sure if this would actually occur, but it would be good to have that uh, trend line uh, tested, uh, so it can actually be, um, you know, gain possible resistance on it. And the way I'm labeling it is in a very bullish uh, structure, in a C wave actually. So one, two, minor scale green. Uh, I say one, and then two gr green. And then the start of uh, the third wave and the big uh, move, right? In a leading diagonal in this minute green one. So one, two, three, four, five, possibly. After after which it could um, deliver that um, move on the on the downside. So uh, yeah, I mean crude oil is, and I've been I've been able to. Um, to, to display this these moves if I if I just jump on the uh, gold chart on the two hour time frame previously I've been even from the top right there I was actually present so uh, this is the daily time frame and previous analysis shared with the um, with the Orbex uh, traders right there right so I was active right there basically um, pointing out a possible rise and with each with each uh, sequence I've been able to 
catch these uh, these uh, these actual moves right here even even while the trend actually i mean the bullish sequence I eventually actually started right so you, i was on top of my game what i'm wondering right now is if this would have uh, a continuation right so let me just go back um, on that now uh, uh, from the energy <laughs> sector, I've noticed, uh, I've been noticing, and I've been keeping an eye out and uh, on the VIX, on the volatility index, and I'm gonna, uh, I don't really have enough time to explain that, but there is a, a spike in volatility in the VIX represents uh, bearishness for um, the stocks and indices, right? And I've been keeping track of uh, of this, and exactly before it, uh, it actually spiked right there in the early early October, I was able to boom you know catch this and that's when the indices uh, lost a lot of ground and uh, the Dow Jones right here on the four-hour chart commenced this sharp move on the downside which uh, was previously let's say um, let's say if I just load the new bars from the time of the analysis I mentioned one one more upside and then boom on the you know tanking on the downside so it's it's pretty interesting. This FOMC meeting will be the bomb. I I, I do believe that it's it's going to have a major impact. Even on uh, on on crude oil right here, the downtrend was was indeed. I've been looking for this downtrend for a while, uh, but once it happened, it pleased me so much because it actually <laughs> it actually tanked. It dropped like a rock, right? So we don't have. I mean, we have one more minute. I'm just gonna load the economic calendar so we can actually see uh, see that uh, that fate rate decision right so it, um, a rate hike is price 10 so we'll um, we'll basically I'm gonna continue with the technicals later on just wanted to give you guys a good like a uh, so some feedback uh, and some technicals let's say before you actually make your own trading decisions as we uh, as I mentioned before we're not here to give you guys um, trades or stuff right we're not we're not gonna do that but instead we're here to provide you with some info and we're doing this uh, the best we can you know serving traders responsibly here with Orbix so yeah we do have a rate hike James yeah here we go here we go right now uh, we do have a rise from 2.25% benchmark points towards 2.5 okay now of course it's time for us to I mean to see the reaction on this yeah and uh, I'm just gonna keep it steady with the with the US dollar right here and maybe uh, maybe if you want to uh, if you'd like to add some some points while this I mean while this actually happened would be uh, would be nice to hear your um, your, your your point of view once it's actually on the table, right? Absolutely, yeah. Just give me one moment because, <laughs> as expected, the newsfeed has obviously just just crashed as that came through. Um, so just give me one moment. Yeah. Okay. okay so look, we're saying that in view of realised and expected labour market conditions and inflation, the committee decided to raise the target range. So as we said, the Fed then that the performance of the economy was suitable to allow for another rate hike. Now, interestingly, looking forward, the Fed is saying that the committee to the economic outlook as balanced, but will continue to monitor global economic and financial development as the implications for the economic outlook. So basically, cutting through the diplomacy here, what the Fed is saying that there are some risks on the horizon, monitoring, Okay, and I'm sure we can imagine what these risks are. We've got the ongoing trade war between the US and China. We've got Brexit on the, uh, the outer skirts of it. So we've got the Fed aware of these risks. We're going to be judging these risks going forward with a view to how they continue to raise the rates. So as expected then, the statement then, not really giving a lot of new information. Um, and the market then, so what do you make of the market reaction so far, Richard? Well, we'll have to uh, take a look at the charts for that, right? Now, obviously, on the small time frame, on the smaller time frame, when this is a two-hour chart on the dollar index, right? So these, these, um, this piece right here does seem as uh, a potential uh, possibility. I mean, uh, the, the the chances for this just increased a little bit, right? So I'm I'm actually curious, and what what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the FX majors, and we'll you know together we'll we'll be able to uh, tackle in the markets and, uh, and basically just see the reactions on each pair, let's say on each like a uh, let's say gold, silver, FX majors indices mostly because um, I'd like to see the VIX how uh, how this how this would actually uh, react right 
Um, no clear volatility right now, but uh, I am gonna keep an eye on it. What I want to see is the reaction of Dow Jones actually, because I've been I've been looking at this today, and uh, I've been mentioning the possibility to I mean for the um, for the trading community there. Which, by the way, is uh, is shared on the on the Facebook link. Uh, uh, I've been mentioning this uh, today: a possible rise and then a possible completion of this. So, um, Dow Jones uh, could be uh, poised because um, for more downside, in my personal perspective. But for that, I'm just gonna load those uh, daily charts uh, once more. Okay. So let me just continue. Basically, let's say, for instance, with the following up, like let's say, for instance, uh, on the crude oil, because that's where we left uh, off. Um, I've, uh, I'm, 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 I'm actually seeing a possible bullish divergence around the corner. Not to say that it's not supposed to provide one more on the downside, as you could have noticed from my um, four-hour chart. On that, uh, you would have noticed that I am actually looking for. Uh, I'm looking basically for one more on the downside so that this could provide a nice uh, bearish, uh, sorry, bullish divergence. And the trend, I mean, this impulse could possibly be done so it can actually at, at least correct until the breakout and the um, acceleration gap when the third wave or the third wave actually started and it broke the downtrend, uh, basically broke the channel. So, uh, yeah, it could, could actually be retesting that. Now, as for the euro dollar, um, I am actually expecting a little bit more downside. Let's say, right? Um, uh, now, obviously, I'm, I'm lately I've been bullish, right? And the way the way this looks uh, for the US dollar, it's pretty pretty much inverted to, from the um, from the dollar index, obviously, right? And the way I'm labeling it is in a five wave sequence right here and the possible start i mean a possible end of this correction for one more on the upside uh, now of course it will have to breach through this trend line and this um, let's say because this potential head and shoulders would kind of look like this right and uh, i'm not really comfortable with seeing these things i mean a uh, right shoulder should Re uh, actually be higher than the left uh, shoulder from a technical standpoint however it is declining and what it should do is it should for this to provide a bullish stance it should break this uh, upper trend line and gain support on it with a potential zigzag structure okay now not to mention i mean just wanted to highlight the fact that the french elections gap back in april 2017 hasn't been filled so uh, the, the cycle indeed my, my I mean the way I'm labeling the things right here uh, the cycle actually points for more downside on the on the euro USD however I don't believe that yet okay but we'll uh, we'll actually we'll need more details basically and what's frustrating right now is this triangular pattern because the triangle can actually go both ways especially in this structure because this structure can actually be um, uh, more of a let's say complex uh, complex structure like let's say W the X being here and then the triangle in the Y and then this one flies right either that or it does provide the downtrend something lower than this low uh, I would be satisfied with a 61.8 as well just like the dollar index I mean the uh, golden ratio notice what happened right here previously on that uh, support uh, I mean possibly could could actually retest uh, retest that right as for the pound the dollar I would expect one more on the downside even though this could be a B wave the pound is going for a lot right now and I'm pretty sure that James you can actually expand on that uh, a bit later on just give me a few more I mean just one more minute or, or two to f finish up with this with these technicals right um, so yeah I mean for the similar to the euro USD the, the pound dollar kind of uh, kind of looks the, the same could could I'm just saying could provide one more up at least in the, in an ex in a running flat so it can actually um, let's say for instance some some brexit news right here or or even here if it is an expanding flat so it's pretty it's pretty interesting right now if I would just jump on the US indices I'm noticing on the uh, that on the Dow Jones on the daily time frame that this trend line has been broken right 
so uh, the, the structure could represent regardless if, if this is an a and then this is a b and the c way it does really look like a c because of this correction in the middle uh, so um, it does i'm labeling it as a, as a double free wxy purple intermediate degrees right here okay and the way this looks is in an a b c and i've been previously active let's say even even right there um, providing the orbex traders with some uh, some nice insights now what i would what i would be let's say for instance curious to see we do have a fibonacci extension right here from w and x measuring the length of w with its correction even though the correction went higher than the previous point so in a running flat or or exp in a running flat scenario the 100 percent would be the target in an expanding flat then this could be even be more bearish and uh, 21,150 could be the next uh, view however i'm not I, i'm not gonna jump the gun right now you guys know my views whoever i mean you guys who are actually truly following uh, my, my analysis or james of course uh, but uh, this trend line has been broken obviously right so it is interesting is it gonna uh, like come for a retest or is it just gonna jump jump into it and then gain support this is the key this is uh, what i would be looking for in the next let's say few trading weeks and with the start of the year as well um yeah i mean similar to to dow jones s p uh, likewise um, however it does it does be seems to be sustained with bearish volumes right here and the bearish divergence is not really so near um nasdaq is even worse because uh, previously bumped bumped its head in this in this uh, support tr trend line uh, as it, it was broken and now seems like it's uh, you know quite bearish right there and um yeah it's really really curious to to actually see now the vix i, I will be keeping an eye on the vix in the following uh, days and uh, following weeks because if the vix actually co continues uh, to to finalize at least 100 percent right here from from that in a potential flat uh, pattern then uh, this could this could mean for the dow jones more downside but uh, basically a, an end of this entire um this entire corrective corrective piece right so this is what uh, i mean uh, a return of the bull market let's say once the vix uh, had tops out with its uh, potential spike right so yeah on the daily time frames that's that's pretty much it now what we're gonna do is um before i jump or more and expand on the smaller time frames intraday like two hour charts uh, maybe james of course you've been quiet so far so thank you very much for for your patience uh, maybe if you want to chip in with some um so some uh, some of your insights uh, or something that you would like to take a look at or maybe our attendees here would would like us to take a look at something in specific i mean some um yeah, I mean, first of all, you know, that was uh, that's fascinating. I don't really uh, use Elliott Wave analysis much myself, so it's always really impressive to uh, to get to look at some some proper analysis with it. So that was really really interesting to watch. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm happy to uh, to open it up to some point. I guess you know we don't really have much more to go on um, according to the statement. Fed keeping the cards very close to their chest there. So again, you know, it's going to come down to the details that are given during the FOMC statement. So yeah, I mean, if we want to uh, if we want to get some questions from some of our attendees, then uh, maybe we can uh, field some of those. Of course, like guys, uh, whoever is inside the actual uh, room, questions are uh, are welcome, right? So if you if you guys, uh, let's say for instance, either want us to uh, expand on a certain a symbol or take a look at a certain symbol or just uh, have any uh, questions in regards to this event you are more than welcome to type in the uh, question box there uh, i'd like to ask you james to keep an eye out for uh, for questions there uh, as i am uh, like with, with the screens here and streaming and stuff and for those of you who are viewing this on YouTube or uh, or Facebook live, then um, please join uh, if you do wish to um, to uh, let's say, for instance, uh, to have like uh, to chip in with questions and stuff. Now, I think it's uh, I think uh, what do you think, James, if we would actually um, interact with our audience and uh, let's say start a poll on this uh, FOMC press conference? Yeah, absolutely good idea. Yeah, let's see what uh, let's see what everyone thinks. Perfect, perfect. Okay, now let's let me just um, okay. 
let's just launch this poll okay okay and our attendees will be able to um, to see basically uh, to, to, to basically share their opinions now the question is uh, do you believe the FOMC event will be bullish or bearish for the USD and we obviously they have a free um, uh, free uh, options bullish bearish and neutral right so according to what you've seen uh, today I'd like I'd like to kindly ask you to um, to be to basically to share your, your personal opinion and your responses are much much appreciated uh, we do have uh, let's say for instance a higher a higher percentage of um, a, a bullish reaction so more people think that uh, that the FFC would, would be bullish, yeah. So let's let's maybe expand on that then. So I mean, if you can uh, can tell us why you feel that this event is going to be bullish for the US dollar, um, based on what me and Richard have been outlining from a fundamental and technical perspective, it would definitely be interesting to get some of your own perspectives on why you think the dollar is likely to rise after this meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let's say more people are joining right now with a neutral stance. Uh, the percentages are now 83% bullish and 17 neutral, right? None of them are bearish, actually. Mm, pretty surprising. Right. Okay. <laughs> pretty surprising right because let's say the main focus as we as we agreed is uh, the FOMC uh, meeting uh, by the way your camera is not working it's paused and I believe it's the because of the poll so once once we um, end this poll you guys are gonna be able to see James uh, as well um, uh, yeah 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 so so James what do you think I mean let's say for example how do you think uh, Fed chair Jerome Powell could uh, could actually react to this i mean obviously they just rose the rates right and they gave uh, they gave investors what uh, you know what they were looking uh, for now do you think the um the stance has changed i mean um do you do you i mean because i wasn't i wasn't taking a look uh, uh, do you have your hands on like, like the dot plots so let me just see if I can get the, uh, the projections here one second. Um, yeah, I mean, as we were saying, you know, it's really going to come down to the details that are given during this press conference. I mean, it's interesting to see how subdued the market reaction has been so far. Um, again, obviously, the rate hike was um, was uh, was priced in. But yeah, so these dot plots now are forecasting just two rate hikes over 2000. In. We've seen members uh, decreasing the projected rates for the end of next year from 3.1% in September to 2.9% now. So that's a 0.3% decrease then from the September meeting. So that's obviously very indicative of the general shift that we've seen in the global environment, but also in the domestic landscape for the US dollar. Um, and as we were talking about at the start of this presentation, you know, there are quite a few um, elements which are starting to combine on the horizon for the US dollar, which threaten to constrain US activity and typically uh, slow the Fed down when it comes to hiking next year. So, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to hear what is said during the course of the press conference, um, given that we have now seen those rate high projections for next year decrease to two from three. Correct. Now, um, the point is, I wanted to, uh, from uh, let's say for instance, yeah, I wanted to share something with you, and also I'd like to ask your, your, uh, for your opinion here. Let's say for instance, in in 2007, right, uh, back 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 before the recession, the rates were 5.25. Then they started decreasing slowly, slowly, right, towards 2% and 1% and so on. With, of course, with uh, with the start of the uh, two, what, 2008 2009 recession right and we all know what happened there I mean with the stock markets and stuff and now right after after that during the recession and stuff uh, the um, you know the rates were kept to almost uh, almost to zero zero point twenty five percent and now they're starting to rise again so notice 
notice something is uh, is actually I mean from from a technical perspective I have some macro charts and really guys uh, as uh, if I just share my personal opinion right here let's say for instance on the Dow Jones right now how I'm how I'm viewing things is I'm just seeing this as a wave potential wave four on a bigger type of uh, correction right uh, I mean a primary primary degree wave four followed by I would like to see the bull market returning in a fifth wave the problem is that um, this wave five if it unfolds then uh, this for me would end a big degree a big uh, l a larger degree uh, such as a um, super cycle wave five uh, what that will end well uh, we'll have to expand more on that uh, like let's say maybe maybe do together what do you say if we provide our traders James with a um, macro perspective um, um, webinar I mean uh, according to that maybe kick kick 2019 off with uh, uh, with a webinar in which both uh, both you and myself would uh, display some macro perspectives. Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see, you know, sort of what shakes out now from this uh, event here. And of course, we've got the holiday period, so a lot of reduced activity over the next couple of weeks. So really, you know, January is going to be the time when we start to see, um, you know, big flow returning to the market, and we start to see these trends developing properly. So yeah. I like the idea of, uh, of getting together again and, uh, and giving some some forecasts and perspectives for the first quarter at least. Great stuff. Okay, I'm pretty sure that our our traders would uh, would be keen on uh, picking our brains, uh, <laughs> you know, just just for them to use our knowledge with, to, with uh, and combine them with their own, uh, you know, analysis and uh, decisions. Let's say. So uh, yeah, the the poll. I think we should uh, we should just. Uh, and this poll we have we have so far like 50% bullish, 33% bearish, and 17% neutral, which is um, let's say the bullish uh, stance uh, prevails, 33% uh, bearish, and uh, then 17% uh, neutral. So 50% bullish uh, is I mean let's say most of our attendees are actually are actually more uh, more bullish, right? So let me just. I will just close there. Welcome back, James. We we can actually see you, all of us. <laughs> Thanks a lot <laughs> once again. It's pretty um, it's pretty interesting. You're in the UK. I'm in Cyprus, right here. Um, you know, but um, I'm pretty sure that you could uh, you could jump on uh, jump board and uh, just stop by the Orbex office right here, and uh, we know we can uh, personally <laughs> share some, uh, some some opinions right here because I believe that we could uh, we we could actually. Um, do some uh, some great things uh, together when it comes to the markets obviously yeah absolutely and yeah just quickly to add in then um we're not going to be sticking around for the, uh, the press conference this evening because obviously it's going to be quite a long drawn out event we don't want to keep you guys too long um, but make sure to stop by the blog tomorrow where i'll be recapping and sort of deciphering what we hear from the press conference this evening um sort of it down in terms of the implications then for USD trading over the course of next year ahead of the macro webinar which me and Richard will, uh, will give to you guys in the uh, first January. Yep, yep, yep. We're gonna we're gonna do it. I'm pretty sure that it's it's gonna be uh, an interesting topic. And uh, yeah, I have a Dow Jones chart from 1914. Yeah, and uh, I like. To <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I like to do, share those uh, those labels, you know, because as I said, the potential potentially the stock market could hit the top. Uh, not saying that um, it will hit the top uh, now, but um, you know, when it hits the fan, uh, people are gonna like wake up, right? Because let's face it, every recession uh, happens from uh, let's say the the time timestamp is like let's say for instance every eight to ten years a recession should actually occur. Last time we had the recession was in 2018, and now it's uh, sorry in 2008, and now it's 2018 or 2019, 2020. Ooh, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like goosebumps. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty uh, pretty interested to see uh, to see basically that. So yeah, as a recap, 
let's say uh, mostly uh, mostly we were I mean I was I was keen on the, these blue arrows actually yeah uh, as I uh, as you notice from my from my stance and also from these uh, from these points right now the euros reaction let's say it is it is let's say for instance uh, potentially uh, having a, a the let's say expanding flat in this red B minute which could could commence a um, a bearish uh, impulse and if you ask me possibly the last one for this structure before that so that's what I'm gonna keep an eye out by the way just like James is gonna prepare some awesome uh, awesome articles on the Orbex blog so will uh, so will I so I'm gonna I'm gonna run through some uh, some excellent charts and um, yeah it's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be nice because this this uh, FOMC um, could give the next trends I'm, speak I'm speaking from my personal point now um, the important and the most important thing would be uh, Jerome Powell's um, stance dovishness or uh, hawkishness in his speech and how he answers the questions reactions etc okay so that's what it is is needed for that but I'm pretty sure that you guys will follow us on the Orbex blog in the next articles, videos and stuff. You know, uh, on the YouTube channel, we are actually uh, posting all of our webinars. This session, as I mentioned, is being recorded. So, um, yeah, you're more than welcome to follow us there because um, I've, you know, both James and myself, we've been able to call some uh, some impressive, uh, impressive moves in the market. Uh, I remember, James, when you were uh, doing that analysis on the crude oil with the... Um, yeah, it's funny. I was listening to you while you were talking about crude oil, and we were, we were both watching that rally this year, waiting for it to, uh, to fizzle out and reverse. Yeah. So that was... Very satisfying, <laughs> very satisfying situation when that, yeah. when that took place. Actually, it started a very big move, you know, and um, again, with, with that VIX spike, um, the volatility index, I'm talking about that, uh, the indices but uh, synchronized with the uh, crude oil fall so uh, yeah as you can uh, as you can actually see while the VIX actually spikes the US dollar kind of tends to gain uh, strength I'm pretty um, pretty curious to see what's uh, you know what's what's it gonna do next right it's either gonna uh, or decide to continue on the upside or just make uh, make a correction because if it does make a correction uh, it could be quite difficult and this correction could actually lead VIX uh, towards here and this could mean uh, a bullish uh, bullish move uh, for um, for the Dow Jones and S&P 500 and Nasdaq 100 so yeah well uh, w this needs to be uh, to needs an eye out right needs to be monitored yeah, well, uh, pretty. We we kind of uh, kind of covered all of this. One one more thing that I would like to display before I finish up with these uh, technicals. Yeah, just like I I did that um, example on the dollar index on the fractal pattern uh, earlier, right? You can actually see that it was just like just like the fractal pointed out towards one more leg on the upside. This could actually go right there, but just like that. And I made a video previously on this, but just wanted to. To display the USD JPY on the daily time frame. Now check this out, guys. This is the fractal pattern, right? Now back back in on the 6th of November, let's say November, beginning of November 2017, the, the USD JPY dropped a little bit, then rose and formed that triangular uh, descending triangular pattern. But the, the thing is that there's another one happening right here. And it's self-similar. You see, fractals. What what fractals is for those of you who don't know, fractal means um, fractal patterns are self-repetitive patterns, self-similar. I mean, they look alike, right? They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be the same, but they look alike. So what I'm gonna do, I'm I'm just gonna do the same thing, right? Just gonna like copy this from the top and all the way to the bottom with the downtrend, right? And just take it from here and place it here. Right, this is what I did in that video, and this is what I mean. The time it actually broke the potentially broke the trend line, right? So let's let me just put this put this thing right here, right? And I'm just gonna move it up. So what do we have? Uh, what did we have before? Before we had a drop, a rise, and of course the triangular pattern. We had a drop, we had a rise, and then the triangular pattern. This could be coming next for the USD JPY. If that's true, 
then this means that um, potentially a risk off period could be around the corner which could lead investors towards uh, um, um, you know uh, turning towards the precious metals such as gold and uh, silver as well so in line with the bullishness that I have for uh, gold not that I'm fully bullish of course this pattern is quite um, you know I mean this fl potential flat formation right here so we have this big A and then A or W and then X I'm leaving it as a W because of this but um, this could actually be because this thing did not hit the top so it's not a running flat or expanding flat it's simple flat so WX uh, and then Y right here which I'm labeling it uh, in a either complex WXY or uh, let's say ABC right? even if this is a correction what I believe is you know after the breakout actually occurred right about right about here yep when I was present um, this could come for a retest of this trend line because this trend line is represents to December 2016 and December 2015 lows when did they actually started the bullish uh, um, you know uh, bullish uh, trends so this trend line is quite serious now it would uh, how I see it personally I, I see it coming for a retest before it gets the hammer it could get the hammer again so in that case the 100% level 1115 could be in uh, in focus right so I just wanted to give you guys a heads up there now James uh, before we end this um, um, th this session if there's anything and um, if you would like to add or uh, say be my guest you have the mic yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy to leave it here Richard I think we've covered a lot and uh, there's a lot of fantastic technical work there for uh, for our attendees to take away with them and uh, yeah the next stage is going to be digesting the press conference um, as I say I'll be writing an article tomorrow uh, talking about what we hear from from Powell over the course of the conference. And yeah, from there, I guess I look forward to catching up with everyone again in the new year for our macro perspective. Of uh, course. First call. Look. Of course, of course. So, yeah, just like you said, I think I think we should uh, we should be striving to provide our traders with more and more uh, valuable content such as this one right here, which was done live. By the way, I'd like to um, thank our attendees uh, for joining us. Also, the ones uh, the ones on Facebook and YouTube live. Thank you, thank you very much, James, as well for uh, for being here with me. Uh, your valuable uh, knowledge helped, like tremendously a lot uh, yeah so thank you guys uh, from my point of view as I like to say to all my traders until next time stay in the green and many pips ahead <laughs> take it easy everyone see you bye James bye uh, bye everyone bye. thank you